Mr. M presents Subtracting Integers with Counters. Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to take a look at something that a lot of my students have difficulty with when they're first learning it. Subtracting Integers. And uh, we're going to use one strategy that we learn. We use a strategy modeling the numbers with counters. Now to keep this in mind we have to remember that there is such a thing as a zero principle. Meaning that if I add a positive and a negative counter together, they equal zero, they equal nothing. So for example, I could add little pairs of counters together, as I've done here on the page, and even though I've got one, two, three groups of counters, they actually equal nothing. Why? Because each red one is worth one, and each blue one is worth negative one, and when I put those counters together, positive 1 plus negative 1, if you actually do the math, they all equal 0. So I've actually arranged all these counters into zeros. So every time I put a pair together, I have nothing. So that's going to be important when we look at our next strategy. Okay, let's start with the one that always throws my students off. Positive 3, subtract, positive 6. The problem with this is through much of school, students are told, no, no, you can't subtract a larger number from a smaller number. You can't do it. You can't do it. You're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed. What the teacher really means is, is that you don't know yet how to do that properly. But they're sort of trying to give the student uh, some guidelines to follow. Well, now, like I tell my students, they've got the freedom to make that subtraction. They just have the responsibility of also getting it correct. So how do we do this? Well, first we model it with counters. So I like to draw them like this. It's a little faster and more efficient for my students when they're drawing them into their book. And there we have positive 3 subtract positive 6. Now one thing that this teacher said before really holds true. If I only have three counters here, I don't have enough to subtract 6 from there. It's just basic math. I can't do 3 take away 6 in that sense. What I need to do is I need to add enough positive counters so that I can subtract 6. I need to have a minimum of 6 counters on this side right here. So how can I add counters on this side without changing my number from positive 3 to something else? Well, I can use the zero principle to help me. I can add 1, 2, 3 more positive counters... So now I have enough counters. Now I have six counters take away six. But to ensure that these three counters don't throw off my number, I'm also going to add one, two, three more negative counters. And what I've done is I've created little groups. This group here is actually equal to zero. So I haven't changed the value of my original positive three counters because every time I add a pair of one positive and one negative, it's actually technically equal to zero. So I can go ahead and get away with that. Now, what am I going to do now? Well, now I'm actually going to do the subtraction. So I have six counters now, six red ones, and I want to subtract six take away six, which of course is going to leave me with zero red counters. But what I do have remaining are three blue counters, which means that's all that's left over once I did the subtraction, which means my actual answer is going to be negative three. I have negative three counters because I have uh, three blue counters left over. Let's try again with a mix of positive and negative numbers. So I have positive three, one, two, three positive counters, subtract negative five. Now, unlike the first question, they are not all the same type of counter, but I need to think about these counters as apples and oranges. I can't take blue negative counters from red positive counters. They're two different things. So I need to add over here enough blue counters that I can subtract five. So I need one, two, three, four, five negative counters. To ensure that my number doesn't change from positive 3 to something else, I need to also add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 positive counters as well. Remember, every pair of 1 negative and 1 positive equals 0. So my actual answer right now on this side is still just the positive 3 because all these pairs don't equal anything. 
Now I can cross out all my blue counters because that's what I'm subtracting. Five blue counters take away five blue counters equals zero. What am I left with? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight positive red counters. So my answer is going to be positive eight. Let's start with a negative number first this time. Negative two counters. Subtract positive six. Once again, I can't do negative, subtract positive. They're two different things. I need to get one, two, three, four, five, six positive counters over here. And to ensure that those positive counters are actually equal to zero, one, two, three, four, five, six negative counters as well. And when I do the math and cross out the six red counters, six positive, subtract six positive, of course I'm left with zero positive counters, and I'm left with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight negative counters for an answer of negative eight. The last thing I need to keep in mind is that occasionally I don't really have to do any borrowing or use any zero principle at all, and here's one of those situations. I have negative one, two, three, four, five, five blue counters over here, subtract one, two, three. Don't need to get fancy here. Do I have enough on this side to subtract three? I sure do. One, two, three, one, two, three. What do I have left? Two negative counters for an answer of negative two. I didn't have to introduce any pairs of red and blue counters because I had enough on the left-hand side to subtract the right-hand side number. And that's going to happen sometimes as well. So you have to use your common sense uh, when you're looking at these and only use the pairs when you absolutely need to add new numbers. Good luck!